welcome back to my channel. If you're new or just haven't done so, please hit that subscribe button so you can get notifications on the latest Say More About That videos. Today's video is what to do if I know someone who's cutting. In this video, we're gonna talk about what you should do if you know someone who is cutting, how to report self-harm behaviors, how to get help for yourself or a loved one who may be engaging in self-harm behaviors, and the responses that often come from friends and family who are engaging in these behaviors once they have been confronted or reported on. But they're not the only self-harm behaviors. And so while today's video is gonna talk about cutting, I'm also gonna talk about other self-harm behaviors that maybe aren't as prevalent or well-known to the general public. When I was doing research for this video, I saw that there was a lot of keywords around what to do if you know someone who's cutting, how to confront someone about cutting, or how to report someone who may be a friend or a loved one, and how are they gonna respond to that? Is my friend or family member gonna hate me if I do this. So we're going to cover all of those things in today's video, along with how to get help for these kind of behaviors. Let's jump in. Cutting is a type of maladaptive coping strategy. They can be many different things, but what a maladaptive coping strategy is, is it is a harmful way of dealing with your emotions. So in general, coping strategies are to help us, right? They're to help us get through a tough time, a difficult situation. Maybe if we're having some anxiety or some depression, we could do like a breathing technique or a grounding technique. And that can help us get through a moment until we can get some real emotional expression going on. And so what happens when people turn to maladaptive coping strategies, such as cutting behaviors, what they're really doing is trying to cope with a difficult situation. However, the behavior they are choosing to do to cope with this difficult situation ends up being harmful, hurtful, and can even be life-threatening. There's a big myth around cutting and other self-harm behaviors that they are an attempt at suicide. While they can be, I would just like to take a moment to say that not everyone who cuts themselves is trying to kill themselves. More often, it is a cry for help, like I am engaging in this behavior and and maybe I'm hiding it, but if somebody sees it, I would hope that they would reach out for help. Besides cutting, what are other maladaptive coping strategies? It could be burning, could be hair pulling, could be picking at your skin. What's hard to understand about these coping strategies is why would you hurt yourself to deal with your pain? Well, sometimes emotional pain can be so overwhelming. It can hurt almost as badly as the physical pain, if not more so. Often what we find is that individuals who are engaging in these maladaptive coping strategies, these harmful hurting behaviors, do so because it's easier to deal with a physical pain or it's more acceptable to be in physical pain than it is to deal with emotional pain. So that's kind of some of the why behind it, some of the other different maladaptive strategies that you might see. It's not just cutting, there are other behaviors. And if you notice someone that you love, a friend, a family member engaging in these behaviors, the first thing is don't be afraid to say something to them. Often people engage in these behaviors in secret, right? They're hiding it, they don't want people to know about it because they know that it's really hard harmful. While they may not be intending to kill themselves, they still know that it's going to be perceived as wrong or bad or looked down upon, and so they hide it. If you notice someone you love and care about who is cutting or engaging in another type of maladaptive coping strategy, say something to them. Say, I see these cuts on your arms or legs, or I've noticed you picking at these wounds are getting really bad. It's definitely not meant to embarrass them or to judge them, but to let them know that you see the behavior happening and that you're there to help. Step two, ask how you can help. Ask about what is causing them to engage in this behavior. You can try and talk to them about it, listen to their story, hear what's going on. And third of all, and you cannot skip this one, is we need to tell somebody. These kind of behaviors are not gonna go away on their own. If your friend or loved one tries to tell you, okay, I'm gonna stop, I won't do it again. That is not good enough, okay? 
Somebody needs to be checking in on this person, whether it's a mental health professional, a parent, someone needs to make sure that the person gets some help. Now, I know that can be hard when you're talking about a friend or a family member, maybe even a youth. If you are a youth watching this video, it can be really hard to say that to your friend or your sister or your brother, but you really do need to say, we have to get some help. For legitimate medical health, purposes, somebody needs to be checking in on this person. So obviously they are engaging in this self-harm behavior for a reason they are dealing with something and what they are doing is not going to really help the main issue. Whatever is causing their emotional pain is not going to be helped by the maladaptive coping skill. Cutting, burning, pulling, picking, none of that is going to make the emotional pain go away or fix the problem that is causing that emotional pain. Really, you need to get to the root cause. So you need to tell somebody, whether that is you or someone else, and then you need to help that person try and convince them to get into some kind of mental health treatment, or at the bare minimum, ask about it often. Hey, are you still cutting? Can I see your arms? Can I see your wounds? Let me see what you are doing. Holding that person accountable can kind of help them know, for one, that somebody does care about them. Someone is checking in on them, they wanna know how they're doing and how they're dealing with their problems. But for two, it also helps them to know that if I keep doing this, they are going to know. And so it might deter them from continuing in a self-harm behavior. You also really, really highly recommend some kind of mental health treatment. So if you are the one engaging in a cutting behavior, behavior. No, people out there care about you. We want to help you. That's what we do. That's why we get into this profession. We want you to come and find better coping skills, whether that's through us teaching you or talking about your problems, whatever it is, seek help. If you are worried your loved one or your friend is cutting and you want to get help and they tell you, no, don't tell anybody, this has to be a secret, know that this is not the kind of secret that you keep. Telling somebody and getting help, you are doing the right thing. Thing. Now, will your friend hate you? Will your loved one hate you? I would say no. In the beginning, like when you first go and tell somebody, they may be upset about it, right? Because you found out this secret that they kept, or maybe they told you this secret that they have, and then they may feel like you're betraying them when you go to seek help. But I do not know anybody who has ever told on a friend who they continue to be upset because what happens is you're getting your friend help. You go tell an adult, you tell their family member something to get more people involved to get this person help. What ends up happening is all these loved ones come together and they support the person, the person gets some kind of mental health treatment, they deal with their issues and in the end, they get the help that they need. They address their real problem, they find real solutions and real healthy coping strategies, and they're not mad. By the end of it, they're gonna be glad that somebody cared enough to tell and get them the help that they needed. So who can you tell? Well, if you're a young person and you're in school or if you're in college, there are reporting places that you can go to, whether it's a school counselor, a teacher that you trust, someone who knows the person that you're talking about, going to that person's parents, loved ones, their significant other, that can help. Talking to the person themselves and saying, I know that you're engaging in this behavior Behavior and I really want to help you. How can we get you some help? You can even let that person choose who it is that you're gonna go tell because perhaps they don't have family members who are supportive of them. Perhaps they don't. And so maybe the person that they want to go tell is something like a crisis helpline or a community mental health agency. It might not be someone that they know, but a more professional person that they would be willing to talk to but they just didn't know where that where to get that help, how to locate those services. So you can ask the person themselves who they want to tell. Now, if you are the one who is engaging in the self-harm behavior and you're watching this video and you know that it's not helping me, it's not really making things better and you want help, use a crisis hotline, 
speak up to someone, show somebody the self-harm that you're doing. There are people who care about you, who love you, who want good things for you. People like teachers, parents, aunts, uncles, cousins, friends, your friend's parent. Everybody has somebody. And if you feel like you have nobody, that is what the crisis helpline is for. I will leave the 1-800 number in my description below. It's in all of my videos. So if you need that, it's always there. Just remember you guys, self-harm is often a coping strategy for a bigger issue. People who have healthier coping strategies can deal with their problems more effectively. So if you or someone you know is engaging in a self-harm behavior such as cutting, seek mental health help. You can learn new coping strategies, you can deal with your root issues, and things can get better. I have made several videos on healthy coping strategies, which you will find here. Feel free to check those out. You can learn them for yourselves, teach them to your friends. By all means, share the information far and wide. And if you like this video, leave a comment on other topics that maybe you want help with. Real life scenarios of how do I deal with this or that issue? How do I talk to my friend or family or loved one about this or that mental health concern? I would love to do videos on content that you want to see. Please give a like and subscribe and ring that bell so you get the notifications when Say More About That videos post. And remember, be kind to yourself. The world is a better place if you're in it.